Let me check the taquitos real yeah. quick. I don't want them to burn. Sometimes in life, you burn the edges, but that doesn't mean the inside still ain't good. Today, we actually like don't really concretely know what we're doing. I think the general subject of time management has come around, yep. um, especially with things getting a lot busier. Um, I feel like both of us, having been through what seven semesters of college, um, have kind of it's a lot more more or less learned our way around. Yeah, Rahul, what's, what's your take on on just time management in general? Because I feel like you, you can think of it as some like awful mess to to attack, but you know what 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 is your take time management is actually one of my biggest weaknesses um i think i'm the kind of person who just loves being involved in things i'm passionate about and as a result you know especially in the environment that is college um i tend to you know sign myself up for a lot of things and take on a lot of things and if there's something you know whether it's a club or an activity that i find cool and interesting um I try as, as much as I can to be able to fit it into my schedule and I think for me I've always tried to take something my mom has always told me is that everything in moderation, right? You know, sometimes you want to really put 100% into your club activities because you love them so much but then your academics falls apart um, or you want to put 100% into your academics but then, you know, you're not showing that you're involved in clubs. Um, and so you just have to like moderate everything and try to have a balance. I think honestly a lot of people say that, you know, you don't have enough time in a day to do like certain things or like you're too busy to do something. But let's say like working out or, or things like that. Oh, I don't have the time to do that. I think a lot of the time when people say that it's because they haven't actually sat down and like mapped out every single second of their life and like, well, maybe not every second, but at least on a calendar, like a Google calendar or something like mapped out every hour and really figured out all right, I really can't actually go and work out here because I have these homeworks to do or whatever. They, they kind of rule out the possibility simply because in their head they think that they're they're too busy. So mm -hmm. my, my approach to time management is probably a little bit more technical than most people. Um, I live off of my Google Calendar um, and things like that. I mean, even for like lunch uh, meetings or coffee meetings with people just for like social stuff or um, hangouts, I'll almost always put it on a calendar. And if it's with another person, usually um, I'll send like a Google invite with that. Especially when you're in college and everyone has a, a Gmail, um, that makes it really easy to kind of keep things in track. Classes you even can import from your uh, Ninja courses or, or B Corp or whatever, uh, yeah, schedule builder or whatever, really, yeah. you can import. And just when you when you see everything kind of in line, um, and, and you can block everything. You can block out two hours for homework, you can block out some time for, um, I don't know, dinner or workout or, or uh, playing games or something, even if you want to moderate yourself, stuff like that. So the way I, I guess, only recently sort of have thought about it is that as much as possible, you have to really prioritize what the, the big things are in your life. I rec completely recognize that I'm not the most efficient person out there. I'm the kind of person who's very detail-oriented, likes to do things you know, really correctly the first time around. And so as a result, I take much longer to do things than a lot of people might. I think this was around two weeks ago. And as a result of kind of my carelessness um, and trying to do things really quickly, um, I actually missed one of the really big things just negligently. I didn't mop the floor at the end, even though I cleaned everything else. And so that was something I missed. And then this time around, I was like, all right, I gotta get all the big things taken care of first. And I'll worry about the small stuff later in the kitchen, you know, cleaning crumbs, etc. And so that really helped. I got the kitchen cleaned faster than I normally would have. Um, and it looked, you know, immaculate after. I think yeah. what people struggle with the most in time management is like hesitancy or just like not 
fully committing to something or spreading themselves too thin because they can't decide or not doing anything at all because they feel like um, like they need to, to be really sure of a decision before they invest a lot of time into it or something. It's like if you wake up in the morning and you think about doing something and like completely just like naturally because you want to do it, of course you should stick with it. If there are things that you just like don't want to do, don't do them, you know? Um, I mean, school's one thing. I mean, you should probably finish school, stuff like that. Um, I, I'm sure later in the series we'll talk about all the stuff we don't like about school. You know, so we both chose to study chemical engineering. Along that route, you discover something else that really drives your passion more than what maybe originally did. I may not, you know, end up working in a traditional chemical engineering role, you know, as a uh, process engineer in a refinery or for a chemical company, which might be what's considered traditional. To be honest, like sophomore year, I was thinking, well, do I really want to pursue chemi as, you know, my full career? Um, for the rest of my life and I think for a lot of chemical engineers at least some of my peers they were asking the same question but uh, a lot of us you know chose to stick it out because we value the experiences gained and even though we may not pursue you know a traditional chemi career I think we still have things that we take from it that are valuable. For, for those of you don't, who don't know like what chemical engineers study basically Chemical engineering actually is a lot more about applying like what chemists learn to a bigger scale that we can make uh, like chemicals on a, on a really large basis. Uh, both Rahul and I are in our capstone design course, so we're basically designing a, uh, a chemical plant. You take like chemicals and you want to make <laughs> like 150 tons a day of, of this other chemical. So oh what kinds of like machinery do you need for that? Um, what kinds of safety precautions are there for that? Um, the, the really main key things that I think you can take from chemi and move into like different things is, is actually balancing. So there's a concept of, of in chemi called mass balance, energy balance, momentum balance, which basically means like whatever goes in has to come out. There's like this logic where things, everything is conserved. Yeah, everything that happens like has to make sense. We you sound know? so smart. <laughs> no. I, because I think this is a really important point. Honestly, it's a really important point. Because yeah. a lot of what, like, a lot of, it's like mental checking yourself. Like, everything has yeah. to make sense. Like, if something goes into a process like money or, or time or whatever, whatever, if your output is not, doesn't add up, like, at the end, then, then you've got something wrong. You can't just ignore it. Like, right. you have to, well, I think Kemi also ex tells you to accept the fact that, like, you might try to calculate something a time or two, and if you're wrong, like you're wrong like you need to go back and redo it and like make sure everything balances out and when it balances out that's when you do good work i think for me the the biggest concept i took away from chemi is like is scale right because yeah. everything we think of is is on a huge scale and a lot of things actually change when you move something from you know a chemical reaction done in a beaker to a chemical reaction done in a you know 150 gallon or 100,000 gallon tank Actually, a lot of times there's a lot of variables that change as a result, uh, and so it's really interesting to just think of things on like a really big scale. I will tell a funny story though. Um, during uh, an interview that I had with um, with Apple, actually, my last interviewer, uh, you know, was asking me because I, I interviewed for a business position essentially. Um, well, it's kind of like a mix between supply chain and business. Uh, if you're interested in the specifics, you can go. I'm going to shamelessly promote myself at any point I can. Jayastanto.com. Yeah, um, you can go read my article. But basically, at one point, I remember his, his straight-up question was like, uh, you're chemical engineering, like, why does that matter? Like, why do, why do I care that you study chemical engineering in, in school? And I started a bit with the spiel of like, oh, you know, things have to make sense. Like, you know, it's very technical, whatever. And at the end of it, because he seemed rather unimpressed. There was a point where I was just like, you know what? Because chemi is really hard. Like it's yeah. it's technically like if you don't want to consider like how the, the specific knowledge that we learn, like basically if you want to consider it like a game, it's a really hard game. Like yeah, you just yeah. it's so complicated and the the mentally it's it's difficult to get through because we have the lowest average GPA in the whole one school. Of, yeah. Um if okay, maybe yeah. one. I don't know. I thought it was the lowest. But, um, and you have to, if, to make it through four years of that, um, honestly, is like a, just a testament to, to how well you'll do in the workforce when, when like crap hits the fan, basically. <laughs> like if you're good at chemi or you got through a chemi degree, I think you are a very mentally strong person. Um, True, yeah. 
You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's just, yeah. like Kemi is hard. And I told him that and he was like, all right, all right. Like he, uh, the interviewer was like, all right, that, that, you know, I can respect that. Like I respect that answer, you yeah, know? Because it's um, hard. That's a good answer. There was actually a quote by, um, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Sir Edmund Hillary was the first person to climb fill in the blank 10 points if you get the answer. I don't know, Mount Everest? Hey, there really? you go. <laughs> yeah, Mount Everest. <laughs> Alright, there you go. So, Sir Edmund Hillary was asked, after summiting the mountain, um, why he did it. They asked him, why did you summit Mount Everest? And he said, because it's there. Because it can be done, it should be done, in his mind. Okay, that's it, folks. That bear in the background is mine. <gasps> Bears. Should we show them the family? Everyone knows why. Let's all right, so Do they have names. Um, yeah, this one's Pookie. Pookie has been around for a long, long time. Wow. Actually, uh, my first nationals, I had Pookie. All right, is when I got him. Nationals he, meaning oh, for skating. skating. Sorry, yeah. and that was in two thousand and and eight, seven. So wow. he's, he's he's really old. Um, so he's been around with me forever. Hi, Pookie. Um, Spencer is from. If you guys watch Wong Fu Productions, um, he's yep, like one of the. Is Toon Spencer from one of the. Uh, I don't even know like what his origins are, but are you a nice guy? Um, raise uh -huh. your hand if you're a nice guy. Oh, shoulders to lean on. I don't nice. know if this will actually show up. And then, Dude. last one, Rila Kuma. I, I don't know what his real name is, actually, but I think it's Rila Kuma. They all have this zipper in the back, but there's like nothing in it. It's just like his insides. It's not weird. <laughs> um, but all, everything has it. In fact, look, I have a, I have a bowl of him too. Wow. That I also got from Japan, and the bowl also has a zipper on the back. So Interesting. I, I don't know. Like it's really specific odd. Specific species of bear born with a zipper. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> then we lean with it, rock with it, lean with it, rock. Oh with man. It. And then we go up. So clap, and then clap this way, to hit each other's hands. Okay. And then fold back. Oh, then oh here, wait. Try this at home, kids. You can try this too. Go like this, then this, <laughs> then this. Then put your folder around. The, uh, I can't do that. My arms are too and big. I, go like this. Without that only works for skinny people. <laughs> yeah. If you can do that, you can do anything. Oh great! I can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Peace. Peace.